Hello again, my name is Marcus Hammerberg. I wanted to talk to you about uh, Koa. And this time I want to talk to you about uh, the concepts behind Koa. Koa is really cool, I think, because it gives us uh, the ability to do uh, non-blocking code without having to write nested callbacks until your hands start to bleed, which is really uh, a blessing, don't you think? But how does it do that? Yeah, so in order to understand that we need to understand a concept called generator. And in order to understand generator we need to take a look at something called yield. Yield is a keyword that can be found in other uh, languages as well as uh, C sharp for example. And it simply means give me the next of a sequence. I don't really understand that, but here's the rules for a generator function. It needs to be denoted with <clears throat> an asterisk. It can have a name, doesn't require to. And it contains one or more yields. Actually, I think it can contain zero yields as well, but it needs that asterisk. And yields, as I said, means give me the next of a sequence. So typically you see the examples in a loop like this, so this loop will continue forever and yielding out even numbers. When I first saw that, that didn't tell me much, so instead I wanted to show you this, which opened my eyes a bit. Here we have a function, it's a generator function, as you can see here, and it yields first this statement, then this statement, and finally this statement. In order to call this, we create an instance of the generator, in this, uh, time, in this instance called Elvis, and then we call the next method of, it, of uh, the instance and get that value. So let's try this and see what happens. We start node with a harmony flag since we're using generators, which is a harmony feature. There's another screencast, I'll link to that on how to install node uh, of the correct version and get Kua up and running. But we need a harmony flag and then we'll run this example file which produce the lyrics for that uh, interesting song. Uh, we could actually continue to call, so let's call Elvis two more times, so we call them all the times so there are yields, but let's see what happens if we continue to call them. So we get the lyrics, one for the money, two for the show, three, get ready, now go, cat, go, and then we get this little structure that shows the value as undefined, as you can see here, and this is interesting, done, true. That means that the sequence is over, the sequence is done, is completed. And for our next call, we can see that because we get a generator. Generator has, uh, we get an exception that says generator has already finished. So we called past the end of the uh, sequence. And we can check this little done flag. So that's interesting. Uh, but what can we use this for? Well, one could wonder what happens here. What happens if I don't call next on a function, on a generator function? What happens is that it waits. It waits, waits for us to call next here. And it does that in a non-blocking fashion. So uh, it's really interesting feature for uh, JavaScript because that means that we can get this non-blocking code without having to use uh, the callbacks. In fact, I came up with this little acronym. Yo, I expect a little delay and you can do something else in between. And you see yield over here. Uh, that might never catch on, but it, uh, it uh, helped me at least. Yo node, I expect a little delay here, so you can do something else while I wait for this value. The only problem now is that we need to keep track on where we were. So we need this, we need to call next. If only there were someone that could call next for us. Luckily there is. There's a tool called CO. There's a number of tools like this actually, but there's one that uh, I've used called CO. And CO takes as its single parameter a function, a generator function. And the interesting thing about CO is that the, for each yield, it keeps calling yield until it's, uh, the sequence is over. 
So here I'm using a little wait function that waits for first one second, then two, then three. Uh, and I do some timing. As you can see, have you seen this by the way? That's pretty cool. Console time with the tag produce the time. So let's run this node dash dash harmony uh, and uh, our yielding function. So it starts and now it waits for the first, the second and the third and once it's back we get the total time. So CO kept calling next for us just like we did over here until it was completed, it, until it got uh, done equals true. So uh, we could CO could actually help us to then to do this in C in parallel instead, because since it's waiting, we could do interesting things like this. So we can do an array of uh, generators here, and if we do that, we'll get we'll see the power of non-blocking code because this will take much shorter time since it's now waiting for the longest. So you see, the total time was just the longest waiting time, which was three seconds and then some rounding errors. All right, so that's uh, pretty cool, but that has nothing to do with COA. Let's see if we can, uh, what COA can bring to the table around this. So COA works exactly the same way as CO. It's keep, it keeps calling uh, next for the R generator functions. So middleware that COA is made up of. COA is really simple actually and just made up of middleware and middleware are generator functions. So here's one middleware that logs the uh, response, that logs the time taken for the request to X response time header. Notice this line, it's a yield next, that means wait for the next middleware. So it yields until the next middleware. And that in turn logs to the console and yields for the next middleware. Which ends up here in our catch all route that waits, just like we did before, for four seconds. So I can show you some interesting things later. And then sets the body. So what will happen is that we got here, get here, we track the start date. We yield next, we get here, track the start date, yield next, get here, wait for four seconds. When that, this is done, we'll end up here again. We will produce the console log. We'll end up here, and it's now yielded, and we'll, produce, uh, we'll set the header. Let's try this. We fire this up. A harmony, uh, like so. The app is listening, and we use uh, Postman to send this, because I want to show you the header. And now we can see that it ended and we see in the header the x response time four seconds that was really tiny but that's how it is can i pre increase it yes thank you postman here we see the header not only that we also got the waiting time in the console over here so since we're now uh, waiting for four seconds in each we can actually kick off several uh, several uh, requests at a time so here's uh, let's try that again we'll kick this one off and then i try to be quick over here and reload that reload that and reload that and you can see them finishing in sequence here and this was actually another demo that we'll get to soon. So they all took similar times and it, it didn't affect the overall time because it was non-blocking uh, asynchronous code. Uh, so that was a, a simple way of showing that. This example, I must confess, is a bit contrived, although it can maybe be useful if you want to do some uh, funky logging, but we can see in our, my final example here where we actually get and retrieve some data from uh, Mongo using a tool called Monk. We then wrap Monk in something called CO Monk, which as you now understand gives us a generator friendly way of calling Monk. So here in our catch-all route we can actually yield uh, while we wait for this to complete. It's pretty fast actually, but we can still wait for that because a node can then handle other requests for us. So let's uh, see that in action as well. Uh, node, 
dash dash harmony 5 it's up that's always promising and then we hit the database and I produced a quite a long list of users here uh, that now was returned so that's how not only that do we get uh, non-blocking code it's also simplifies our code a lot which I think is maybe the biggest uh, uh, feature of Koa that it gives us the code that it just works like you thought you would so you yield out and then you get the variable here that you can use to continue uh, work with uh, later on in your code no passing arguments to nested callbacks uh, that I always tripped up on so I hope that it, this made the concepts behind NOAA yield and generators a bit more clear. Thank you for listening. Bye.